from the kitchen folks. It's my last big batch cider of the 2023 season. It's only the second week of September but nearly all of my apples have fallen and I'm on my last big brew now. So what I've got in this box here is the windfalls from the last week. They've really gone down this time. In the previous two weeks before that the box was mounded and now it's not at all. Anyway what I've also got is some other apples which I've already pureed so I've cut that stage out with those. It doesn't matter. But for these apples I'm going to show you what I've done with the other apples and what I do in all of, with all of my apples when I'm making these big batch ciders. So this segment of the film today is going to be about me preparing the apples. So first of all I'm going to give my apples a rinse in the sink. They're all windfalls, I haven't picked a single one of them. So some of them will have a bit of dirt on, or worse. So that's all my apples in the sink. I'm just going to give them a swirl around. And what I'm going to do now is just leave them in here for 10 minutes. Just have a little rinse on. So I've got my big chopper out and you can see my pan just here. Seconds away round one. What I'm going to do with each of the apples is cut it in half, like so. Pop it in the pan. And I've got this to do for all of the apples. It doesn't matter about the cores, it doesn't matter about the brown bits, it won't hurt. I'll come back to you when they're all in the pan. Okay, that's all of my apples in the pan. I've got two thirds of a pint of normal tap water, so about 400ml or thereabouts. That will mean that there's a tiny layer of water in the bottom of the pan. I'm going to put the lid on, the gas on, and I want to ignite that woof, and turn it right down. And what I want to do now is for some steam to build up and I'm going to break down the apples with steam. That's going to take a little while, so let's pick one of the other ingredients that's going into this cider. So I'm making a cider flavoured with lime and hops. Now we don't have lime growing in this country, but we do have hops. And here's my hop vine. And you can see from one end, it goes all the way along. Big bunch in the corner. And down. And down. So that's obviously a lot of hops. I'm going to pick a panful for this cider. So the logical way to do this is to snip off some vine and there's lots of it. So that's my first bunch on the table. The hops are going in the pan, the waste is going in the box. So I've got my pan by my side and it's as simple as this. So hot flowers, pan, So that's one complete vine, all flowers picked off, that goes in the bin. So flowers in the pan, vine and leaves in the box. I've got tons of this to do. Let's watch it in time lapse, it'll be a lot more interesting. Okay, that hot picking went on for a bit. Let's have a look what I got. And believe you me, I was doing this for over an hour. I'm nowhere near the panful. I'm probably up to second knuckle in terms of where I've got. There's quite a few in there, mind. As for the apples, these are well on simmer. And actually, look at the level. That was right at the top and that sank so much. I need to turn those off and leave them. So they're done. So I just leave them now until tomorrow. But as for these, I think I'd like to weigh how much I've got. Right, so I'm going to fill this up. Right, so that's 200 grams. So I'll take that off. Let's start again. So 
So in just over an hour tonight I've picked over 300 grams, about 327 grams and I've only touched the edge of the bush, there's so much there to pick but I want at least 600 grams in this brew so I'm going to have to come back to this on another day. You don't need to actually pick it again so we'll pick this up when it comes to me then sorting the apples out and by that I mean turning this into apple puree but as for picking the hops you don't need to see any more of that but I will show you what I do next with the hops when it comes to that point in the brew so I'll catch you then. Morning from the kitchen folks it's the next day it's preparation day two for my apple hops and lime cider I'm still continuing with preparing the apples here they are this is what I steamed uh, last night in the pan I've still got more hops to pick it got a bit dark the other night but I'll be back out there this afternoon but what I want to do before I go out is get those out of there and into here and broken down into puree So in order to do that I'm simply going to use a ladle, get those out of there, into there. Lovely and juicy. Okay that's enough to begin with. Then using a wooden spoon I'm simply going to push the apples into the sieve which is a colander sieve and I'm going to push them around so all the nice juicy flesh falls through the sieve or is pushed through the sieve into the pan beneath and from the pan beneath then I'll have nice apple puree which I'll make the cider with. All the rubbish will stay in the sieve and by the rubbish I mean bits of skin, the pips, the stalk, other stuff that just ain't going to go through. I'll just show you what I've got in the sieve right now. So that's how it currently looks after just a few seconds. Underneath I've already got some puree falling through and you can see it's stuck to the side of the colander sieve. I'll carry on until I've done this one and then I'll come back to you. Don't have to give you our make, I'll tell you that. I'm surprised I don't end up like Big Arnie with this arm doing this. And it's always my left arm because I'm a lefty. Right that's the first one done. So that's the rubbish that's left in here, that's going to go into this bowl and that will then go onto the garden as compost. But back to this, underneath, there's the puree, plenty clung, uh, clinging to the bottom also down there, but that's great. So I'm just going to take the rubbish and put it in my bowl at the side. And now it's a case of putting more apples into the sieve and repeating the process. So I can't see any point in me filming that for you now so what I'll do is I'll carry on doing this it's going to take me about 20 to 30 minutes in total when I finish doing all this I'll come back to you and show you what I've got okay catch you in a bit well that's done and I've got some arm ache I can tell you but let's have a look what I've got so I've got a pan full of apple puree well not a pan full but you can see a good amount of apple puree I've got a bowl of rubbish which is going to be watered down and watered into the garden for compost and I've got a load more hops to pick this afternoon I want to pick at least another 300 grams I'd ideally like to try and get nearly a kilo in if I can but I don't know if I'll get that many so I'm done for now I'm going to put this in a plastic tub this apple puree put it in the fridge to keep it fresh I'm going to go and pick some more hops and then I'll come back to you either later today or tomorrow to put all this together catch you then Two hours later, six foot or 1.8 meters of fence cleared of hops over there. There they are. What I'm going to do now is weigh them and last night's hops and see what I've got all together. Hopefully I've got near enough a kilo. So I've got my scales zeroed with the big pan on top. I'm just going to start chucking these in. So that's pretty much what 100 grams of hops looks like so I'm confident I should have about a kilo. I'll come back to you when the pan's full. Well this is amazing I haven't got a kilo I've got exactly 1.1 kilos that's incredible how has that finished exactly like that it's not a fix I promise. These hops won't keep so I need to use them now I'm going to add four litres of spring water into this pan I may end up adding a little bit more but an initial four litres
fact, I'm going to put more in. I've now got eight litres of water in that pan. That's enough for now. I'm going to put the gas on, ignite that and turn it right down low. I don't want to uh, burn the bottom of this at all or anything like that. I just want this to come to a very, very gentle simmer over a period of hours. So this lid is going to go on top and that's that. I'm leaving that now until it's come to a simmer. I'll come back to you then. Hey folks, well it's a good few hours later. Let's have a look at those hops. I think that they're just about in the right place. Oh yeah. Just lift that lid off properly. Yep, now I'm going to give them a mash. I want all those oils and flavours to come out of them. Pop that lid back on. Okay, I'm going to leave these overnight to sit and steep and I'll pick this up tomorrow for what will be preparation day three stroke brew day one. Catch you then. Hey from the kitchen folks, this is preparation day three stroke brew day one for what will now be my hops, lime and ginger cider or my lime, hops and ginger cider, whatever sounds best, I'll work it out. Anyway, let's have a look at the key ingredients. So here is my 1.1 kilos of hops in the eight litres of spring water from yesterday. That's a nice strong hoppy tea. It's a cider, I need apples. And here are my apples plus some from the other day. So this is six kilos of apple puree made in exactly the same way that you saw it. My lime flavour is gonna come from eight limes. I'm gonna be using the juice and the zest. I've got two pieces of ginger root. I'm going to be using some more spring water. I'm not quite sure how much, but up to uh, another nine litres. I've got craft ale yeast number three from Bigger Jugs, and I'm going to keep that yeast happy with Young's yeast nutrient. I'm going to hopefully achieve a clear brew by adding some pectolase to break down any pectic enzymes from this fruit matter. And I'm going to be up in the ABV by adding some dextrose monohydrate brewing sugar. This is a five kilo bag and I'm probably going to have between two and two and a half kilos. My fermentation vessel of choice is the Rich's fermentation bin, which I'm currently just emptying of sanitizer. I'm looking forward to this one. Three of my favourite flavours, the hops, the lime and the ginger. Let's crack on. Get the lid off these. Still some warmth in them, definitely. Anyway, in the sink, I've got my other deep pan. This is my smaller of the two big deep pans that I've got. And I've got this colander sieve over the top. And what I want to do is to get the tea removed from the hops into there by pouring it through. So hopefully nothing too dramatic. Okay, I've done some. So you can see those in there. Now what I want to do is give these a mash with a potato masher and try and extract the liquid out of them into the pan below. I'm going to have to pour the liquid out of this pan into another pan, uh, otherwise it'll just fill up. See where I am at the minute? Yeah, it's just about full now, up to the level of the uh, underside of the colander sieve. So what I'm going to do to begin with is pour it into plastic jugs. I've got four litres worth of plastic jug here, so that will hold at least a good portion of this. I'll just put that to one side, and I'll do the same again. And that is four litres so far. So that means I've got another four litres of liquid left in the big pan. So I'm just gonna keep mashing these through, and when I feel like there's no more liquid gonna come out of them, I'll put these into a bowl, and they're going to go back on the garden to feed next year's hops. I'll come back to you when I finish straining the hops, extracting the liquid from them, and I've just got the liquid hop tea left. Right, that took a bit of doing, but I'm there. So these are the pressed hops. These are ready to go onto the garden as fertiliser. And this is the hop tea. There's about seven and a half litres, so they've probably retained about half a litre, which I can't get out, but that's fine. So to my hop tea, I'm going to add another two litres of spring water.
So what I'm going to do using this plastic jug is take out some of the brewing sugar and I'm going to pour it into the hop tea and then I'll weigh the bag in a second to see how much I've taken out by what the bag weighs afterwards. So I'll just give the bag away. So I've put about one and a half kilos in so far. I'm going to keep going till I've got two and a half kilos in there and then I'm going to stop. So that's me approximate two and a half kilos of brew sugar in here. Now it does dissolve pretty easily but it hasn't dissolved yet and I need to add a little bit of heat to this. I won't need to add too much heat. Uh, it certainly doesn't need to come to a simmer but I definitely do need it to be fully and properly dissolved so I can take a good and accurate gravity reading at the beginning. I also need to make sure it's not stuck to the bottom of this pan which is why I'm just moving it around now because this pan is notorious at burning on the bottom because it's very thin steel unlike my other pan which is a lot better. Right as the French would say garçon flambe. Right I'll turn that down I definitely don't want it frazzle in the bottom of the pan. So I'll get the lid on. Let's have a look at those limes. So I've soaked my limes in a bit of hot water in case there was any waxiness on the skin. I'm pretty convinced that there isn't but I'm just doing that for a safety thing. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to grate this using this side of the grater to get some zest off. No I'm going to have to use this side which I always find a bit annoying and pointless because it never really seems to do much. I mean I can smell it so it is doing something but I always find it a pain. I'd just like to be able to take the edge of the skin off. In fact I can just take the edge of the skin off. I've got some really nice new sharp knives. That's a better idea. So with my limes I'm just going to go like this on the skin. I don't want to get pith. I want to get that nice zesty skin. And it's going to take a bit of time and it's going to be a bit of a pain but I think the result will be worth it. So I'm going to come back to you when I've done this. Okay that is my limes now peeled and that's the peel just there. I'm going to be coming back to those in a minute. Next I want to have a look at the ginger. So I'm going to have a go at grating this and this does seem to be a bit more successful than what the lime was and I can really smell the gingery smell it smells fantastic as you can imagine fresh ginger does and I'm just going to add all my ginger into the lime okay my lime and ginger is in the bowl I'm going to put it in this saucepan and I'm going to pour onto it some spring water I'm just going to cover it over so a lid on gas on and heat on and I want this to come to a simmer. Now the reason I'm simmering this is in case there's any bacteria on the ginger or on the skin of the lime. I've been touching it with my fingers there's also the grater there's been a lot of surface contact with things so I'm just doing this for safety really because I don't want to get bacteria into the brew because it might taint it. Now with each of my limes I'm going to cut them in half like so. And then each of those halves is going to get juiced on my juicer just here. So I've got 16 halves to do. It's going to take me five minutes. I'll come back to you when I've done them all. Not bad. Right, let's have a look at the hoppy tea with the sugar in. Just going to swish this up to see if I can see any brewing sugar. And indeed I cannot. That's a good sign. So I'm going to add into this the flesh from the lime that's there. I don't need to worry about this being uh, sanitised in the same way as the skin and the ginger. The ginger particularly is something that did concern me that it could carry bacteria. And as for the limes, I suppose I ought to show you how much I've got. So the eight limes have given me 250 ml of lime juice. So I shall pour that in. And now the lime skin and the ginger is coming to a simmer so I shall turn that right down and just leave it for two minutes. 
Okay, two minutes is up, so the ginger and lime tea, oh it smells gorgeous, that's going to go into the big pan too. Okay, that's what I've got, it's steaming, so it's obviously at a good high temperature. I'm going to turn that completely off now, and I'm going to reduce the temperature by adding the apple puree into there. Now you've got to bear in mind the apple puree has been in the fridge, so it's quite cold. And if I put it into ferment at this temperature, it's too cold to ferment. So fermentation will take ages to begin. So by putting it in here, I'm reducing the temperature of the liquid and I'm increasing the temperature of the puree. So it's creating a happy medium in between. And then I'll just leave it for a couple of hours on the ring without any heat underneath it. Bear in mind my fermentation vessel is made of plastic, so I don't want to put any hot water into it. It's nearly full, not quite. Right, you can see the pan is virtually full. I'm not going to risk trying to put the rest in. I think I'll just leave that and put that in the bucket with it. So what I need to do now is leave this to cool down. So this is going to take a few hours, so I'll pick it up this evening. In the meantime, I'm going to get these on the garden and I'll have to go and pick some more hops. Right, catch you in a bit. Okay, folks, it's quite a few hours later and I'm now ready to get this brew put together. So I've cleaned and sanitised my brew bucket and I'm going to begin by adding some water into it. To get all that in. Then I've got a big five litre bottle here. And I'm going to put most of this in but not all of it to begin with. There we go, we've got a couple of litres I'll leave in there. And the reason for that is I've still got the rest of my apple to get in. So just get the lid in there. Here it all goes. So that's the remainder of the apple puree and about four or five litres of water in the bottom of the bucket. Give that a good mix, make sure it's all consistent. So now I've got my big pan, and I mean big pan, full of uh, apple juice, water, hoppy sweet tea, lime, ginger, there's all sorts going on. So I'm going to use a jug to transfer it because it's far too big for me to pour it to begin with anyway. So when it goes, I think this is going to be a really flavoursome cider. The hops give off a massive smell, really sort of pungent, and I'm getting a good lime smell as well. Right, I'm going to brave a big pour now. And that's lovely. What I'm going to do now is pour the rest of this water into the pan to wash it out. I'm going to leave anything behind and I'm going to tip all that in as well now. And I'm now on round about 22 litres. Yep, just over 22 litres and that's absolutely fine for what I want. So now I need to stir it all together. I'm going to start to add the dry ingredients and I shall begin with the pectolase. So I'm going to put three heaped dessert spoonfuls of this in and I'm just sprinkling it on top. And hopefully this will mean that I don't get a pectin haze in the final product. There's never a guarantee. I'm now going to add my yeast nutrient and I'm going to put two large uh, heaped dessert spoonfuls in. I don't need any more than that because this is very nutritious anyway with all that apple pulp in there. I'm going to give it one final stir around so that the mixture is consistent because I want to take the original gravity. And I'm pretty confident that that's good. In it goes. And I'm starting off on an original gravity of 1.052. 10.52. So now it's time to add my yeast and I'm using the Craft Ale yeast number three from Bigger Jugs and I've not got much left in the bottom of this packet so I think I'm just going to sprinkle it on top and see how it looks. So I'll give it a little stir just so it starts to work its way in in case the apple matter all floats to the top and then holds the yeast at the top because that could happen and I want it to be nicely mixed. 
Right, I'm just going to get the lid on the fermenter. That's lovely. It snaps nicely into place. They're really good, these Riches bins. I'm just going to pour a bit of water into the airlock. Get this on top. Right, let's have a look at it. So here I am. Hops, lime and ginger cider, brew day 1, 17th September 2023, original gravity 1.052, and yes, I'm happy that it's done. So there's 22 litres in there, and all, all I need to do now is wait. So the next update that you'll get from me will be when fermentation begins, hopefully tomorrow, so I'll catch you then on brew day 2. See you later, folks. Well, it's brew day 2. And fermentation has just begun. It has been pretty slow. It's taken about 26 hours for the yeast to really do anything. Anyway, I'm getting a big fat gassy bubble through that airlock about every 30 to 40 seconds. It's not fast, it's not furious, but it's not bad for a starter. It's just been slow. Right, I'll come back to you in a few days time when it comes to opening the lid and giving it a stir. See you then. Hey folks, it's brew day seven for my hops, lime and ginger cider. I'm just going to take the lid off today and give it a bit of a stir and a mix up. The fermentation slowed down quite a lot. So I think it just needs freeing up a little bit from underneath. So I've got my big spoon. Oh wow, the smell. Amazing. Lime and hops is absolutely 100% there. So that is great. I'm really happy about that. So I'm just giving this a stir now because the... Uh, apple had sort of settled together and I think if you give it a stir and break it up it helps release a bit more CO2 and it helps to sort of kickstart a bit more fermentation in there. I'm not ready to rack this yet, I want it to be in here for at least another week before I think about racking it. But this smells fantastic so I'm really looking forward to it actually. Right, that's enough, we don't want any oxidization taking place so I'm going to put the lid back on that's that and we should see fermentation uh, begin again in the next uh, minute or so but I won't be filming that so I'll catch up with you next time when it comes to racking and that will probably be in about seven or eight days time something like that see you then Good afternoon from the kitchen folks, it's brew day 10 for my hops, lime and ginger cider and guess what, on brew day 10 I'm racking already, it's incredible. You can see very clearly that we have a very nice layer of cider and then we've got a very good layer of heavy sedimenty trubby stuff. There's good stuff in all of this but fermentation has completely and utterly ended. So in this segment of the film today, I'm going to be taking it out of the brewing bucket and putting it into a Montan's wine fermenter and a couple of Demijohns. I'm going to be transferring using a jug and I'm going to be pouring it through a funnel with a filter in there to catch any heavy trub. Right, first of all, it smells amazing. Wow, really good smell. The lime and the hops is just massively, massively apparent. This is what it looks like. So using a cleaned and sanitised jug, I'm literally dipping and then pouring through the filter. And you can see that the filter catches any bits of trub. Now the finer bits of trub will get through and this won't be completely clear but it should clear naturally, fingers crossed. If not I'll use finings. But so far they've not been bad this year. Okay I'll come back to you when I've filled this one up, there's no point in you watching me just pouring and pouring repetitively. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, that's the Muntons wine fermenter done. You can see it there. Getting a few bubbles through at the minute just while it's settling down, but that will probably stop. That's the trub that I've removed, so not much yet, but it's going to get a lot heavier and trubbier as I go down. I've now got to fill these up. I'll come back to you when it's all done. See you then.
Hey folks, bit of a mission, but this is where I am so far. So you can see that the mountains is there fine, and it's already looking like it's beginning to clear a bit at the top. This is the second damage on that I've got out, and it's milky. I mean, it's going to settle, but it's going to take a bit of time. Now, I don't think I'm going to get enough from there to fill this damage on. So what I'm going to do is do something different, and I'm going to strain it through a muslin cloth um, over a pan. Now this will definitely separate the liquids from the solids, however, because it's going to be heavily oxidised, it's probably going to turn to vinegar. So best case scenario is, it's fine and I can turn it into cider. Worst case scenario is, I've got hops, lime and ginger vinegar, which, do you know what, doesn't sound that bad, does it? So I'm just going to pour what's in my bowl in here. And you can hear it dripping through actually. And now the big pour, I might not get it all in at once. It's just an experiment, I just want to find out what happens. So I'm going to put a lid on top to keep out any contaminants. I'll come back to you later. Welcome to the entrance porch folks. This is where my hops, lime and ginger cider is going to reside until it clears. Here it is. Number one and number two, next to my raspberry, cranberry and ginger cider, which is clearing up just nicely all on its own. Here's the pan with the heavy sediment in it and you can see it's already started to turn into like uh, an apple sediment cake. I'm just going to leave that. There won't be enough of that for me to fill up a damage on anywhere near so I'm going to leave it and then I'm just going to make apple cider vinegar which is hops, lime and ginger flavoured. Might be quite nice. Anyway I'm not going to put that in this film but I may end up talking about it in a future film. So the next film that you see from me is going to hopefully be bottling and if not then clearing with finings but fingers crossed for a bottling film. Okay catch you in a bit. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks, it's brew day 35 for my hops, lime and ginger cider and today it's big bottling day, my least favourite part of the entire brewing process. Anyway, I've got all my bits and pieces in place, I've got my utensils sanitised, I've got my cages ready, I've got my bung softening in hot water, priming sugar. Bottles sanitised, and there are the beasts up there. Now you'll note that they're not clear, but I suspect very strongly that that is a pectin haze. So I'm not going to add finings because I think it will be to the detriment of the final product. It might mean that I get a little bit of sediment in the bottom of the bottles, but it doesn't matter. I can live with that. Also, just to point out, it's been very cloudy, and just as I've put my vessels up here, uh, 10 minutes ago the sun decided to make an appearance so I've just covered them at the back with a tea towel to try and keep the sun off them but hopefully this will be a fairly fast process and there shouldn't be any problems. So I'm going to begin by adding some priming sugar into each bottle so I'm looking at round about a rounded teaspoonful equivalent not too much and the priming sugar is what will help to give this carbonation so the yeast which is left in suspension in there will find this bit of sugar, it will break it apart. A byproduct of that is CO2. That will build up pressure in the bottles from what is essentially a secondary fermentation. And it's that pressure build up that gives it a sparkle. Fingers crossed anyway. So I need to take the lid off of the Mountain's Wine Fermenter. Oh, I don't want to move it too much because I don't want to disturb the sediment in the bottom and that sun is a real pain I wish it hadn't come out just yet never mind so before proceeding I'm going to take a final gravity reading so I can work out the alcohol by volume and that has finished on exactly 1.000 000. so I'll work out the ABV afterwards I want to get on with the bottling so I'm going to bottle today using the tap at the bottom of the Muntins wine fermenter and I'm going to use a jug to extract the cider and pour it through a coffee filter and funnel into each bottle. And that's coming out just nicely. So I know when I've got 700ml that I'm just about on a bottle. So I'll stop it there. Now it goes through here. And you can see in the bottle that there's a nice bit of reaction to that priming sugar. 
So that's the first bottle filled. Before going any further, I want to get the bung in top. <sighs> I won't worry about the cages just yet. I just want to get the bungs in so it protects it. So that's one down. So I'm just going to carry on bottling in exactly the same way, using the tap, using the funnel and the filter. I'll come back to you when I've emptied the Munton's Wine Fermenter. Okay, I've pretty much emptied the Munton's Wine Fermenter according to the tap. There is a little bit left in the bottom. But the sediment line's not far beneath it, so I can sacrifice that. So I've managed to fill 14 700ml bottles from the Munton's Wine Fermenter, which is great. Two more than I actually anticipated. So I'm just now going to give this, or give these rather, a rinse with the tap, just to get the sticky residue off the outside, because there will be plenty. Now I need to add cages to the bottles because when that secondary fermentation happens pressure will build up and these will fly out like missiles without the cages holding them in place. So it's simply a case of pulling the cage down and twisting it and twisting it tight. If it makes your fingers sore use a fork, that's what I do. You can buy a special tool for it but a fork suffices. Okay so that is one bottle which is bunged and caged. I've got 13 more to do. There's no point in you watching me do that. I'll come back to you when I've done them. Hey folks, I'm back. I'm now ready to empty the demijohn in exactly the same way as I just did, except I'm going to siphon rather than use a tap, because obviously the demijohn doesn't have a tap. I don't think there's any point in me filming the siphoning process. If you've watched my films before, you've definitely seen me siphon before. So once I've emptied the demijohn, I've got all my bottles done, then I'll come back to you. Okay, everything is now in the bottles, so that part of it's done. I've still got to work out the gravity, I've still got to do the labels, but I've ended up with just a little bit extra. So I thought I'd have a little cheeky nifter at this point and talk you through uh, how I think it tastes. Very limey, but also quite dry as well. The ginger's not massively coming through. There's a warmth on the back end, but that's about it. But the bitterness of the hops is definitely there. So the hops and the lime, definitely evident. The ginger, not so. So I think over time, let's see how this develops. But in the, at the minute, it's a dry cider. It's time to work out the alcohol by volume for this brew. So I take the original gravity, which was 1.052. I did up from that the final gravity, which was 1.000. That equals 0.052. I multiply this figure by 131.25, which equals, drumroll please, 6.8%. And that for me is a nice and moderate strength cider. Not rocket fuel on this occasion. So there's my ciders on the table. I've got this Fomemo Bluetooth printer and it's connected to my phone on which using the Printmaster app which comes with it I've created this little label and I'm simply going to print out one label per bottle. It's proper posh in it. So I've got a fair bit of labelling to do so I don't think it's that exciting watching me stick labels on a bottle, first one done. So when I've done them all, I'll come back to you. Hey folks, I'm still in the living room and this is where my cider is going to condition. It's gonna condition up here on top of this drinks cabinet, which even though it's autumn, it's currently 19.9 degrees Celsius in this room. It does stay nice and warm. It's a south facing room and even on a cloudy day like today, you can feel the warmth in here. So it's absolutely fine for conditioning up there. The conditioning process will allow the flavours to develop, the cider will get some body, and it will develop a sparkle when that secondary fermentation takes place. So I want to leave that now for between four and six weeks. So the next segment of this film that you see from me will be between four and six weeks from now, and that'll be opening and tasting. Catch you then. Good evening. 
hiding from the kitchen folks. It's the grand opening night for my hops, lime and ginger cider. Now, I can't remember the brew day. I need to go back and look on my phone and look through the files. So it will appear as if by magic at the bottom of the screen. But I can tell you, looking at the label, that this has been in the bottle now for just over five weeks. So I think it will have conditioned. And in fact, I can tell that it's carved because if you look at the bung, you'll notice there's a two to three millimetre gap between the bung and the bottle. That means pressure's built up when it's pushed and the cage has therefore served its function. Safety feature. So I need to get the cage off. Now I can see it's sharp. It's uh, the outside um, coating on the metal has gone a bit thin and I'm going to hurt my fingers, my delicate little fingers. So I'm going to use a small dessert fork to unpeel the cage or unravel the cage which if it stays intact, will get used again. And in fact, it has stayed intact. So yeah, this cage will live to see another brew. What will it be? Who knows? Right, I think I am gonna get a pop, but am I gonna get a pop? Oh yes, I got a beauty. And I've got vapor coming out of the top of the bottle no massive rush of bubbles, but there is a ring of bubbles, but no massive rush up from the inside that I can see. So I've got my faithful Casmark Bruegel glass. Let's get this poured. Oh yeah, look at that. That is carborific. That's beautiful. Really nice colour. Golden. I think it's pretty clear. There's a very slight haziness to it, but overall I think that looks quite decent. But before I go with the serious business of the tasting, I do need to get that picture for the thumbnail of the film. What am I going to do? I never know what to do these days. It's just the usual, isn't it? Come on, someone in the comments, think of something more interesting I can do. Right. Now it just smells like a cider. Cider smell absolutely is apparent. Neither the hops, the lime or the ginger is dominant. It literally smells like cider. Now immediately on the palate, whoa, the tanginess of the lime and the bitterness of the hops are equally balanced. That's good. Lime and hops go well together, but the ginger, it's got a bit lost. Now this happened to me with the last two I've opened that had ginger in. Now last week I opened one that had ginger in and as I was drinking the bottle, and bottle had got a little bit sort of warmer with the room temperature, the ginger flavour became more apparent. And I'm wondering if the ginger flavour isn't so good when it's cold straight out of the fridge. It's a distinct possibility. I don't know. It's a nice flavour. It's definitely more of a summer drink. It's very refreshing, very light actually. What's the ABV? 6.8. Yeah, it's not a rocket fuel cider and that's quite apparent. But the flavour's nice, the colour's nice, it looks good. It's like I said, smells like a cider. In terms of profile, I'd say on the spectrum, it's on the dry side of medium dry, but the fruitiness of the lime and the hops, that flavour that it gives it, just drags it a little bit out of being dry dry. So it's a dry side of medium dry, I would say. It's pleasant enough. I'd certainly enjoy this in summer, although at the minute it is winter. But anyway, who cares? I'm going to enjoy this tonight. I hope you've enjoyed the film, folks. I've absolutely enjoyed making it and I'm definitely going to enjoy drinking it. Please could you subscribe to my channel, comment on the films, like, all that sort of stuff. It really helps the channel grow and I'd be hugely, hugely appreciative. Thank you emotional. Anyway folks, I'm going to enjoy this. Catch you on the next film, whatever that may be. Cheers to you. <sighs> the film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. 
If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.